Hi, this is Brian Oliva at Gethsemane Music. In December, a lot of people got their Christmas wish with the release of Moog Firmware version 1.2.0, which contained five new features and fixes for 14 issues that have uh, plagued the Moog over the past year or so since it's been out. The fixes included changing up some of the gain staging for a lot of the effects and several additional uh, MIDI-related uh, fixes, because there's been a lot of missing MIDI functionality in the Moog one, and they're starting to fill in all the gaps with that. But what we're going to focus on today is one of the new features. Uh, some of the new features are nice. Some are more subtle than others. They've added uh, selectable aftertouch curves, so you can set things to adapt to uh, how you actually use aftertouch. Uh, those are very subtle differences, but it's something you can play around with and find something you like. Uh, they're also allowing the presets uh, export function to be filtered like the preset browser, which can uh, allow you to select specific presets to export instead of having to dump all of them at once. They've also added the ability to save, load, and import and export MIDI mapping, which uh, wasn't possible before. But the one that so far everybody's overlooked that I find the most interesting is the active voice indicator. And what that is, is depending on your Moog 1, whether it has 8 or 16 voices, at the bottom of the main display in the home view, you'll now find either 8 or 16 little dashes. And what those do is they actually light up as you use the voices for a particular synth so that you can visually gauge exactly how much you're using and how much you might have left. For me, this makes it very clear and visible to answer the question, is 8 voices enough, which a lot of people ask, because now you'll be able to see how fast you're using them up and whether 8 voices will suit you for what you're doing. it for is kind of a diagnostic tool. So if you have uh, a problematic oscillator that may be out of tune, if you find a patch that just keeps changing oscillators every time you hit it, uh, you can cycle through and maybe identify which oscillator is causing the problem so you can focus on that uh, when you go about trying to get it fixed. That's about it for this time. This firmware update also came with about 45 new patches, so we'll be doing a video shortly to demonstrate what some of those might sound like. And uh, like always, please leave in the comments what you think of this video and anything else you'd like us to cover. And like always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.